Hey, welcome back. Sling Caper continues. 619 hours. I still need a haircut. I'm on the windscreen today and let's have a look, see where I'm at. I think I mentioned last time that I'd shot the laser up through the middle to line it up. So that gives me a reference point. I've also got these blocks here just to stop it sliding down while I'm trimming it. I went round and I trimmed it with the wheel on the end of my Dremel and that got it reasonably close. Now I've got the sander down there, the belt sander, and I'm just bringing it in a little bit at a time. Now this lip that's just here doesn't sit sort of square and it's on an angle like that. So the edge of the windscreen glass needs to come to the at least to the bottom of there, maybe even just a fraction smaller is fine, just to give enough room for glue squeeze out and then we can just level that off. Um, so I'm slowly getting there. The top of it is uh, pretty good down to around here somewhere. Um, I've got to come down here further. This whole side I've only just got close. This bit here is about right to about here. It needs a little bit more off here. Doesn't quite sit in right when I when I push that, of course, this will all make a difference here. So it's important to sort of start at the middle and slowly work out on both sides and that will move it out into the right place. Um, at the moment, it kind of looks just a fraction small, but it's only because it's being pulled out here. And when as that pushes in, that'll bring that back in. On the other side, I've got a little bit better. Um, and this sort of sits in at the bottom of there, which is quite good and up the top to about here. Um, I could actually go with making it just a fraction smaller still and we're about the same down here. A bit of a gap that I managed before but I'll tidy that up in due course. On another note, I think it's this construction across the road here but there's this wicked smell of sulphur in here. Like I don't know if it's hydrogen sulphide, hopefully not. But it stinks and it wasn't me. And for what it's worth, I mark the edges with masking tape because I find it much easier to see where the gap is while you're sanding it than it is to put a like a pen mark on it, particularly with the plastic that it comes with. So I just do this and just do a little bit at a time, work my way around it and get it to sit. Pretty happy with how I've got this now, just with the way it fits, it seems to be pretty good all the way around. So. I've masked it on both sides, on the inside of course, um, left a, a gap for the, for the glue obviously, um, and masked it up on the outside. Now the inside needs a braiding on, on both of these as per the, the data sheet and, and the KAI actually as it turns out, which is the kitten assembly instructions for those who don't know. Okay. More loud music, so hopefully not copyright strike again, but anyway. So I think I've pretty much got this ready to go. It's abraded on both sides. Um, one thing though that I'm not that happy about. So on the inside here, with it sitting in how it should, we can see there's quite a big gap between the flange that it's supposed to sit on and the windscreen. So if we get the ruler in there, we can see, well, it's a bit difficult for me to do it with uh, just one hand. So here, there's around about eight millimeters and further in, up in this bit here, it's probably closer to 10 millimeters, which is quite a big gap actually. So obviously when they've molded this thing here, it should be more vertical rather than slanted back towards the back of the airplane and obviously when they've done it they haven't considered that this is actually if we get the angle of the glass here it's you know it's reasonably vertical here it's not far off that I don't know um, 70 degrees or something like that and they've sort of planned for about 45 so it's not the best if we look at the data sheet for the adhesive we go down to the curing chart. This is about the only place that you can see about how thick, the, how thick the bead could be. It talks here about the cure time. And so if you go out to a 10 millimeter bead, it's a six, seven day cure time. So it would take a week for it to dry. Well, I'm not too worried about that. But 
you know, 10 millimeters looks like it's kind of right at the maximum. And in actual fact, it's probably closer to 12 by the time you've glued the canopy on and it's, and it's sitting slightly proud because of the bead at the lower end. And also this tells you how you should lay the bead on as a triangle. Well, the, the height, if we're talking about a 12 millimeter height, then, you know, this is about an inch thick, 24 millimeters. So that's, that's gonna be quite tricky to do. Another little thing I've been doing is on the, so this is the instrument panel set up here on the right hand side that actually trimmed a little bit too much along this line here and so you can kind of see that little divot just there was where the hole would have been in the clamp that mounts the glare shield to the fuselage and even that was with another hole drilled in that clamp because the holes that were in there also didn't daylight out into any material so I've just done a little layup on this side and the other side actually is just okay whereas this one here is, is needed a bit more but once that's dry I'll obviously shape that and I'm, I think I'm actually going to stick some riv nuts in there rather than trying to do it by hand with, with nuts. And that's the magic number at this point in time. Glenn's been sick so I haven't seen him for a while, he's still up at home so that's okay I can make a mess and uh, Harry's away as well so another little thing I've been doing is I'm making a another knacker inlet for the cowling on the left hand side and there was a few ways I was going to do it but um, I just decided to do it with the foam and layup so I mean this isn't how it ends up being it's just being held in place while some of this dries a little bit more and I'm waiting for some peel ply so I can complete it, so I just thought I'd leave it like that for now, just might as well harden up a bit more. Right, big day for us today, it's glue the windscreen in day. Um, I've decided I haven't changed anything with that lip that I uh, wasn't that happy about. We're just going to load it up with sealant and figure that everyone else does the same thing and so it obviously works and it does fit within the specs of the glue, so um, that's what we're going to do. So Glenn's just off getting some more straps to help hold it down and some rags and a few other bits and pieces. In the meantime, I'm going to get the, uh, the flanges and the windscreen prepped for gluing. And let's see how we go. Big day. So starting off with the Seeker 205 just to clean it and uh, with paper cloth like it says in the assembly instructions and just around the frame as well. Just gives it a good clean up. My camera fell off the mount at that point and now we're putting the 207 activator on and I'm just using a foam roller just to put it on and I found that a really easy way to put it on. Well, that was interesting, that's uh, evil nasty stuff, it stinks. Um, respirator would have been really good at that point. I did have a fan blowing fresh air on me which uh, sign it kind of helped but uh, I think people's breakfast might have taken a turn for the worse. Oops. Right, here we are actually applying the glue now and uh, having two people help, you could actually easily get it done within the open time with just one person, but it was certainly easier with two. And I'd made a little tool just to um, make the right shape of the glue. Once we put it on, we put some straps on after applying a little bit of pressure with the heel of our hand. Um, and then we jumped inside and applied more and that was, um, the big gap actually made it a lot easier and then we could force it in with our fingers and um, that made things quite a bit easier. Once we've done that, just go quickly around the outside. Okay, we've got 630 hours on the clock. The windscreen's glued in. I've taken a lot of the tape off from around the edges. I just don't like this stuff because it has a habit of drying out and then you can't get the stuff off, particularly on the inside. So I've cleaned all that up. Because it's so thick here and we've got a seven day drying time, I'm just gonna leave these bottom straps on for a week. This one here, I've just left on for 24, it'll probably be 48 hours, and then I'll pull that off and pull that tape off. Inside, that's all cleaned up inside, and I've got the clear shield in, and the panel in, so hopefully none of that stuff will have to come out again. And the fuel selector. I've left the wiring off on the back, because I'm just waiting for some heat shrink tubing to label it. That should be here on Wednesday, unfortunately. 
We're, it's a little bit dark in here at the moment because they've blocked us in. We've got the film crew here out the back. They're going to be doing a film and it's supposed to be a New York cafe, not a Cape Town cafe. So this is all about to get to the stage where we're going to get kicked out. So I'm just going to close this off and uh, we'll see how we go next week. Okay, so there it is, 630 hours. It was great seeing Glenn for the weekend. He helped me put the windscreen in and uh, we've moved on. Like I say, we're about to get kicked out of here because of the film crew. So there it is, 630 hours and we'll catch you, catch you next week.